Okay, probably one of the most challenging things for people in music that um, they tend to say they get frustrated with is that of scales. And I'm not going to give you a most in-depth. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. That's the goal. Simplicity helps you to get started on making music. So give me one second while I try not to mess nothing up here. Let's do this. So this is tonality. If you haven't used tonality, perhaps you've seen it, me use it where I play chords. Right now it's not hooked to anything, so you don't hear any sound. Um, but I wanted to show you there is a scale mode here. And why do you need scales? Well, two reasons. One, it can help you with chords. Two, it can help you with um, learning how to play leads in your song. And three, and probably the most used situation outside of chords would be your bass, playing a bass. So when we say play a bass, that's probably one of the most challenging things. People that don't play bass or that are not super, um, have not been playing music for a while, struggle with writing a bass line. And recently, I think his name is John Hunter, did a video about bass lines and gave some crucial key uh, thoughts in there about using root notes and the bass notes and the fifths and all that stuff. And people don't know what that mean. So, or maybe they do, or maybe they don't, I don't know, but I'm just gonna show you, share my thoughts on it. So let's say you're playing in the key of C and you know that the key of C exists with all the white notes, which is also A minor. And you can see that right here where it says C major. So it's just the white notes and an octave, right? Here's an octave. So when we say first, obviously our root note, that's the first note you're gonna play. So let's say the root is C. Then the third note is gonna be E. And the fourth would be, or the fifth would be B, or G rather. I'm saying all my numbers are letters wrong. See, I'm even saying numbers when I mean letters. All right, so C, E, G, right? That makes up a triad chord. That's the first, third, and the fifth. Now, why is that important? Well, when you're playing bass notes, typically if you were playing a C, you're not gonna play a C on the bass, but you might, you definitely would, I mean, you're not gonna play, when I say C, I mean C major chord. You're not gonna play a C major chord. So you're gonna play the first and the fifth, or you might play the first, fifth, and the octave. The octave is the C and then the next C, right? So an octave. So first, fifth. So that's typically the bass notes you would use for just a C major. However, you could explore and say, you know what? I don't wanna just play octaves. I don't wanna just play, I wanna just play something that feels good. And that's where I tend to say is the best way to be. Find what feels good to, for the music. Sometimes if you're using a sub bass, you're probably just playing the root notes of the chords, whatever that chord may be. I think this might be in the way here of doing that. All right, so I'm gonna play a song for you. I'll, I'll do my best to mute the bass, let's mute the bass. So here's a song with some chords. being played and I can tell you now because I, I played it but that the chords let me go back to the menu here the keys that's basically what the chords are it's just two chords Right. So when I do the bass, when I look at these chords, you can see the chords here. You can see here's the root notes. I'm playing the bass in this key in the keys. technically is copy the bass notes over and put it on a bass sound, right? Which is gonna be an octave, sub-octave below. 
um, or an octave below. So here's the base, and that's exactly what I did here. And I, then I went back and added in these ghost bass notes, right? So how was I able to add in those ghosts and know where to put them? That's where the scale came into play. I understand the scale that I'm playing in, right? And so I can fill in that those notes. Now this particular scale, if I'm being blatantly honest, I don't really know what it is right now because I didn't look it up. I just played what I felt in there. But I do know chord notes that are in the scale. I do realize the C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and the uh, and the um, A sharp are all in the scale. So any of those notes that I play will work. So all I did was start out here with the. give an accent so here you're playing this is the note I played so you have going why do I know to play this note because it's the fifth of that of that uh, chord so remember the chord is here one three five right so here's the fifth so I know that will work as an accent note so if I'm playing here then I go to this chord, I can go, or I could go, I could have used a third, but I'm probably not gonna use a third, more like I would use a fifth, maybe the octave. In this case, I just use the fifth. So it's pretty, it works. If the chord's here, it's a triad, it's always gonna be that last note is your fifth note. This is your third note. One, two, three in between. There's three notes in between the next note that you hit. And then there's two over here. One, two. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see my fingers not knowing. One, two before you hit this note. So that's one, two, three, four, five. There's five notes that are resting between those notes you're hitting. So that's the three and the five. Okay. I know that seems complicated. Just think about triad chords. Don't try to go deep in the seventh chords. It'll get complicated on you and you'll you'll uh, get to a point where you don't even want to do it. You'll graduate to that next stage when you get there, okay? But for now, just know that if a triad chord, that other chord that you or note that you're playing right here is your fifth, right? One, five. So for a bass, that's easy. Now, when you go back to scales, I'm gonna pull this back out because it helps to see it, right? Then you can understand where you are. So if you wanna, if you want to get more in depth, you can find out what chords and keys you're playing in by using Scalar 2. It'll kind of give you an idea. I think it's probably one of the better ones that I use personally to, to show you what key you're in. Once you know the key, then everything else falls into place, right? It's the key to open the door to get you to be able to play what you need to play. So all you got to do is play within the key and you're good. Now, some jazz musicians will go outside that but that and, and explore other tonal sounds. When I say tonal, it means it's tonally sounds good in that. But just remember, focus in on just some basic things. And that is, what is the scale of the key I'm playing in? If you learn the scale, you can play any of the notes in that scale and you'll be, you'll be fine. After that, it becomes rhythm and it becomes just what sounds good to you, right? So if I... So I know that F is in there. So there's an extra note I can play right in this in this scale. It sounds good. So learn the scales. This is why I'll say it. You'll hear other people say learn scales. They really help you. So if you pick like a D, then you can learn D major. Just go through here. Use tonality. If you don't have it, grab tonality. It's really easy. Look at scales and you can say, okay, I'm playing in the key of E flat. Press E flat. There's E flat major. 
E flat Dorian. All of these scales, these E flat will work in your song. You can play in a Dorian scale technically, even though you're just playing E flat and E flat. So you got choices, right? You can pick through and, and learn these scales. Once you get one, it's kind of, it falls in place pretty good. It's not super complicated. And you just got to learn them, okay? There's no way around that, in my opinion. You can go off of your ear and play and do pretty good if you got a good ear. But for the most part, if you learn the scale, you'll always have it. It's like, you know, it's like when you learned uh, how to ride a bike, right? Once you did it, you got it. And now you can jump on a bike and just ride a bike because you figured it out. But you need to take the time and put that exercise in to get it. And um, yeah, I know it sucks to have to learn something, but then it also sucks not to know it, right? At the same time, and then you're trying to, you see people playing and you're getting frustrated and it'll expand your music horizon and put you into other worlds of music to where you'll listen to other stuff and um, you'll you'll feel like you can explore. Especially when you're a sampling artist and you're trying to sample, you're using your ears more for sampling to learn how to play. So even more so, if you got a if you're if you're a sample artist, you should be able to figure this out because the key, you're listening to a song trying to figure out what the key is. If you play anything other than just the sample over it, you still have to learn how to pitch stuff. You still gotta all that listening and putting in time that you're doing to learn how to pitch samples, how to do all that is the same amount of time it will take you to learn how to do a scale. And once you get it, then you can pick up your piano and start playing other instruments. You'll be happy down the road that you took the time to do it. And um, I, I mean, personally, in my my opinion, you you uh, will find you'll find more joy in music if you do that, and less time that you'll be bored with it. Um, let me see if this one work. Just so I can show you something here. There we go. So yeah, um, let me go back here. Stage piano, give me this one. So that's the end of this video. I just wanted to show you and tell you that, yeah, it's gonna make your music sound so much better once you learn these scales. Now, let's talk one more thing, and then I'll let you go, actually, now that I think about it. Chords. The scales are important when I say with regards to chords, too, because you're actually playing the same notes that are in that scale. So if, like, for instance, right, those were in the chord, then I know I can go. Right? I only know that because I know the scale. I know fits the scale. So any it's not because I'm genius or I'm some you know extra smarter than anybody else. I just took the time to learn the scale. So I say this to say if you want to be better at your chords, if you want to be better at playing without having to uh, use Scalar, although I use Scalar too, so don't get it twisted. I mean, sometimes when you need some real intricate chords or something, you can find some inspiration from it. But look, if you're in this octave, it's the same key notes. So let's say I play these two notes here. I go over here. So see how I can use notes from here and notes from here and blend the notes to come up with nice sounding thick chords. And 
and I'm making up whatever I want to make up on the spot just because I know those scales. So learn your scales. Again, I will say it, it's important. There is no substitution for it. And once you get it, you got it. You can speak the language now better and play more fluid. And of course, playing is timing. So if you're struggling with timing, you're going to have to just practice that the same way you have to practice the scales. But once you have that knowledge, the language is, is not hard to speak. It's, it's just a matter of finding the rhythm. And rhythm, um, you're going to have to play to a metronome or you're going to have to play to um, a beat or you're going to have to play, but you can get that too. Right, whatever you want to do style-wise, You'll have to learn how to play that. So anyway, I'm not the greatest player, but I do understand the value of scales. And I just wanted to put that out there that if you can learn the scales, you definitely can play and and you'll enhance everything that you know about music instantly just by learning scales. All right, that's it for this video. I'm out.